Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing a start to finish makeover featuring house and canvas chalk finish paint. Now a while back I did a review video on this, but it was using my traditional board and my brush. In this video, we're gonna be spraying it. So I can't wait to see how it comes out. This is gonna be my first time doing it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, this piece has obviously been cleaned and prepped. I didn't do that on camera for this video. I've got that done in many other videos, but I did clean this with my crud cutter and I went ahead and scuff sanded it just to make sure because certain areas felt really shiny to me. So I scuff sanded it with one of my scuff pads. Now, I didn't prime it because even though this is a lighter color, I wasn't concerned about bleed through and it didn't seem to be an issue because House and Canvas has a really good coverage for their paint. Just so you guys can see all angles of the project, one question I get asked a lot, how far away am I from the piece with my spray gun? About 8 to 12 inches. Want to show you the coverage on the first coat. This is first coat only. I did see a couple of flaws that I wanted to go ahead and do some wood putty filling, so I've done that. I'll sand those out and then I'll go ahead and apply my second coat, but I wanted you to see how beautiful the coverage is on this. Single this is coat. the sanding pad that I was referring to. I'll link these down below. These are fabulous. I went ahead and sanded out all of those little repairs and now I'm ready for my second coat of paint. This is my little trick for painting the tops of the drawers and the sides without having to tape everything off. I wanted to show you guys on camera because I get asked about this a lot and people don't believe that it actually gets done this way and that it doesn't make a mess. I'm going to do all the drawers and then I'm going to show you the aftermath. All right, and as you guys can see, the drawers are all done and I have very little, if any at all, overspray. So it does work. Just wanted to show you this angle really quick. I put all of my pieces on their back on a dolly so that I can get underneath and make sure I get every little nook and cranny of the piece so it looks nice and clean. All right, so we're all done with the paint portion. I wanted to show you guys in its entirety what it looked like. I'm gonna get in really close so you guys can see how beautiful the coverage is. It's super smooth and it has excellent coverage. And yes, there is a little spot on that third drawer down there, but it's actually a light reflection. All right, so I've started sanding here and I started with 100 grit sandpaper and realized very quickly that the finish was really tough so I went to 80 grit to go ahead and help me get this off. Obviously I'm speeding this up for you guys because this segment is terribly long. Sanding a piece to bare wood is not a quick process. Anyway, I'm um, working with my 80 grit sandpaper here and in about a minute or so I have to go ahead and switch it out because I realize that it's clogging up and this one particular brand of sandpaper I'm using right now, this 80 grit, it is not doing the job like my other so had to switch it out I'm still on my 80 grit and as you notice I'm not trying to get every little last bit of the okay, finish I want to talk off. about something for a quick minute because I mentioned this often not all sandpapers are created equal I started this piece which is solid wood by the way so I'm not concerned about burn through whatsoever but I was using 100 grit sandpaper and I was realizing, I was using my Abernet and I was realizing that it wasn't cutting it. So I had to go to 80 grit. Well, I didn't have any Abernet or Pro Sand 80 grit, which are my two go-to sandpapers. So I grabbed some stuff out of my husband's shop, which I don't know, I think it's like Harbor Freight, but I want to show you up close the difference. I am using a dust collection system and I get asked this a lot and that's why I wanted to go over it, was not just about the sandpaper, but the mess it makes. Typically, the mess is so minimal. So I'm not concerned about having a freshly painted piece and getting dust on it. However, working with this sandpaper today, so you can see all of these holes here are for airflow. Well, when you use the Pro Sand, it, I'm gonna show you, it has all of these holes. When you use the Abernet, it's a mesh screen. So all of the suction is allowed to come through the sandpaper. Using this, not so much. Let me show you the difference because I haven't wiped this or dusted this at all from the beginning of my piece, which was with 100 grit, producing very little, and switching to this, which not only does it not allow flow, it's not very good sandpaper. I went through two 80 grit discs on one piece, which is kind of a lot. So let me show you. Okay, this is the section I started with my 100 grit. I'm gonna get in really close so you guys can see. You can see there's dust particles there for sure. Not a lot on the top, 
not a lot sitting there. And that's when I decided it wasn't enough. It wasn't removing the finish really well. So I switched to my 80 grit. Let's come over to the 80 grit. Look at the difference, you guys. Look at the difference that the dust collection system, which is phenomenal, it's a Festool CT MIDI, can't suction enough through with a sandpaper that has this little bit of holes. And look at that sandpaper, how clogged up it is. Gross, right? So that's why when I talk about not all sandpapers being created equal, <laughs> there's several factors to that. All right, so we're back at it. Now I've got my 100 grit and I'm gonna go ahead and as you see very quickly, it starts to come together and I'm getting all the remainder of that finish off. After this 100 grit, I go ahead and I will be switching out to my 120 grit and then I work my way up to 150. So that is where I decide to stop is at the 150 because I felt like that was plenty smooth enough. The other thing to keep in mind when you're sanding is make sure that you always don't apply a really heavy pressure with your sander and you're also keeping the sander very flat to avoid any divots or um, putting any dents into your surface. The next step I take is just to blow off all of the dust with my blower and then I go ahead and take a microfiber cloth and I wipe the entire thing down to get any excess dust off. Okay, so here is our ready for stain finish. I'm gonna show you guys a close up in just a minute. But the one thing I wanna tell you because I probably get messages at least a few times a week about sanding. And the one thing I will tell you is, as you guys can see from that segment, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of sandpaper, it's a lot of grits, it's a lot of time. And to do it right and get the most flawless finish, it's necessary. So if it's something that you don't wanna put the time into or the materials into, then it's probably not a look for you. And I say that because most of the common messages I get is I have an uneven finish, I have swirly marks, um, I have divots. So all of those things are things that are extremely avoidable as long as you take the right steps and take the time. So let me just show you up close how beautiful that came out. It was a lot of work and like I said, it's it's not for the, you know, person who wants to get a, a project done in, you know, a half an hour. It, it does take time. And I don't mean a half an hour of just sanding, I just mean the whole project itself. So just know that when you are taking a piece down to bare wood for stain, it's just gonna take some time. Now, I'm gonna share a little trick with you. So, swirl marks, I mentioned those. What are they and how do they get into the finish? Swirl marks are from a few things. Obviously, our orbital sanders are swirling, but when we apply too much pressure and we don't go through the right grits, it will put those swirl or coil marks into your finish. I've seen them in so many pieces, I've done it myself, so I also know how it's done. So by taking the right steps, going up in grits, and making sure that you do like I did, went over something about 10 different times, um, sometimes coil marks are extremely hard to see to the naked eye, and then we don't see them until we stain. So what I normally do is if I'm in question, I take a wet rag, doesn't matter what kind, this is just a paper towel, and I go ahead and I wipe down my surface. I'm just doing a section here for the video. This will allow me to see any coil marks, any swirl marks that have come up in the finish. This isn't gonna hurt anything, it's gonna dry, no problem. But this essentially mimics me staining the piece. And so before I do that, I usually, if I'm in doubt, will wipe it down and make sure that I don't have any swirl or coily marks. So there's a little trick for you. Okay, so I've been standing here for the last 30 minutes staring at this piece, trying to figure out what to do with the same color. And I've been debating back and forth. Do I want to leave it natural? Do I want to do a whitewash? Or do I want to go with a dark stain? And I still haven't decided. So stay tuned because I'm still... All right, after much debate, I did decide that I really wanted to go with more of a monochromatic look. So I'm going to go ahead and create a wash by putting a little bit of my paint into water, mixing it up, and brushing it on. This will allow me to have a very subtle look with still being able to see that beautiful grain and keeping it in a light form. All right, here we go. I've got my rag in my pocket ready to wipe back and I'm gonna go ahead because it's a warm day today and wipe back section at a time so that I don't let it sit too terribly long. I'm going from one end of the dresser top to another, just covering it. I'm not too terribly concerned about getting it on my trim because I can wipe that off with a damp rag. I'm gonna do this process 
as many times as it takes to go ahead and get the look that I want. In this case, so I did it twice. Here is the final result for the top before we go ahead and put a clear coat on it. Now, one of the things I wanna mention is if I had just wanted the natural look, why didn't I go with just adding a clear coat? Well, if you remember when I placed the water on top of it with a rag, that's essentially emulating what the clear coat would have looked like without doing any kind of a wash and lightening it up. It would have just turned it very golden and that's not the look I wanted. I wanted something very monochromatic and I wanted it to just be very subtle. So I'm really happy with the results. All I did was take the exact same base color of the paint and create a wash with it. Now when I do top coat it, it will deepen it a little bit and that is our last and final step. I also put a piece of the hardware on just so I could see the contrast before I went ahead and did it if I was gonna like it. I'm very happy with the result. All right, so we're all ready for top coat. I'm doing one final wipe down just to make sure there's no dust or any debris left on the piece. And then I go ahead and I'm spraying with my Ehrlich's 5500 and General Finishes High Performance Top Coat in Satin. I am gonna go ahead and cover the whole entire piece and I'll do this three times. Anytime you're using water-based products on bare wood, it can tend to raise the grain. So in between my top coats, what I like to do is go ahead and use quadruple zero steel wool to knock down any of that grain. I wipe it back down again, and then I go ahead with my next coat of clear. This creates a buttery smooth finish. All right, you guys, that is it. I wanted to show you before I go ahead and put the hardware on and stage it. This is it, two coats of paint, three coats of top coat, and the top being washed. I'm super happy with the way it came out. It was exactly like the vision that I had in my head and that wood grain just pops. All right, guys, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being subscribers. If you are not subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscribe button as well as the post notification bell so that you know when all of my latest videos are released. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below. I'll always answer your questions. I love engaging with you guys. And also remember, if this was not enough information for you, you wanna learn some more about painting, go check out my website. I offer one-on-one, -on -one, in-person, and virtual lessons. Again, thank you for subscribing and being a part of my YouTube community and helping support my channel. Have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one.